Hello loves, I'm grateful to have another opportunity to share with you my experience, knowledge, and wisdom during our ascension process. I want to talk about food because it needs to come out of my system and I don't think I've made a video on a spiritual perspective on food or my perspective on food. Food is a controversial topic in the spiritual community as well as in the community as a whole because there's so many different types of lifestyles and types of diets and different forms of uh, food intake. You have carnivores, omnivores, herbivores, vegetarian vegetarianism, uh, pescatarianism, uh, veganism, uh, liquidarians, liquid liquidarianism maybe, <laughs> and everything in between that you can think of, right? And food is such an important part of our ascension process that um, I want to share my experience and my knowledge of like of how I've came to figure out what I believe is the key to food intake in our ascension process. So backtrack, um, I was a non-spiritual person and I became a non-spiritual uh, spiritual person so I have that perspective. I uh, was a carnivore and then uh, I practiced veganism, uh, vegetarianism, then I did pescatarianism and then veganism and now I'm back to being a carnivore and I can't wait to explain or share with you that process. Because there's so many different types of food intake and uh, so much knowledge and information and what's good for us and what's bad for us during our ascension process or trying to elevate our frequency and you know all this you know conversation uh, uh, that surrounds food and uh, mine is the easiest I think my <laughs> I condensed it I condensed it uh, to very simple simplistic formula and um, and I have to give thanks to my mother because I mean she gave me this pearl of wisdom and it definitely coincides with my belief system and it coincides with my spirit guide uh, teaching and my uh, yeah pretty much everything coincides with everything so wait until uh, further along this in uh, this video or you can just fast forward it so you know what the secret is my main concern at the moment is eating vegetables raw or cooked and uh, that's really what is really important because if you take let's say fish you could eat fish raw or cooked and you'll get proteins you get minerals nutrition value off of that food um, meat wise right cow beef whatever chicken horse cat dogs whatever you want to eat right um, cockroaches <laughs> Uh, and then the, the, the main practice for me right now is cooked or raw vegetables. And um, even if you are a carnivore, you will eat vegetables. If you eat a hamburger, you'll have your lettuce, you could have your spinach. Um, if you are a vegetarianism, you have your other, you know, you vegetarianism picks pretty much any type of lifestyle that you want to eat your food you will eat vegetables and fruits so do you eat it raw or do you eat it cooked the answer is either is okay depending on which vegetable you eat or yeah which vegetable you decide to digest um, it's best cooked or raw um, because there are people who are raw vegans who literally eat everything raw not cooked boiled steamed or any other cooking method and it works for them you know it, it works for them uh, fruit I believe is more suitable to eat raw than vegetables however that's that works for them right um, there are vegetables that are water soluble which when cooked re releases certain vitamins that we need uh, to digest uh, for example carrots uh, tomatoes, mushrooms, spinach, pumpkin, or like squash. Oh, uh, what else? Mmm. There's, I think there's some pumpkin, squash, tomatoes. Uh, yeah, there's. Okay, I think those are mostly like ones that you can cook. 
<laughs> for certain and you will get your vitamins intake because they uh, they hold their vitamins in like their membrane or something and the heat releases it right and sometimes there's other uh, let's say I think it's asparagus yeah I think asparagus uh, there's other like uh, and I think you should know the vegetables that you can cook versus ones that you should eat raw because raw um, you vegetables start losing their nutritional value once they are chopped right so um, once they're like picked they start losing their nutritional value but when you cook certain vegetables they lose 60 to 70 percent of the minerals uh, and nutrition that we need so knowing or doing your research on which vegetables are suitable to eat when they're cooked which um, are best when they're cooked then do your research and I've gave you six and I think that's plenty because I think if they don't fall in those then uh, tomatoes 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 yes tomatoes cooked tomatoes but if they don't fall in that category then um, it's more beneficial if you eat them uh, raw right raw uh, so yeah I was like what's going on I need to know should I eat it raw? Should I not? There's, you know, there's that uh, conversation on raw versus cooked. So that is my entire, um, right now I'm trying to like understand that, right? And this is what I came up with. So now for my secret. So once I've learned, uh, I experienced pretty much a, a variety of different lifestyles and food intake and um, knowledge and wisdom that came to me. So I have my experience, right? I went through several processes of food intake. Uh, knowledge, which is like, right now I wanna to talk to you about raw versus cooked, um, which is best uh, diet for oneself, uh, for ascension, which as as ascension wise, you should have like a raw vegan diet. Um, and if you can go to liquidarian, then that would be the highest level form. However, any extreme is definitely um, depending on your goals uh, and your beliefs it will take you right because you can still eat meat and ascend you can still eat meat and ascend out of the body because even going through a fifth dimensional trying to ascend to the 5d we will still have a form a light body um, so in a way we still have a body right so regardless if it's like what traditional spiritualist or you know people who understand ascension, oh, you need to have like a vegan diet, not consume any meat or whatever, because we're trying to ascend our dense bodies. That's, that's their belief, right? That's not, I don't think that's how it will work. However, it's your belief. Um, I don't think extremes <laughs> are any, I don't think, I think extremes limit oneself. However, that's just another conversation. Okay, so yeah, back to the secret. So the wisdom and then wisdom passed down through me are through friends and family. And one of the best pearls of wisdom that I received uh, for intake of food was my mother's advice. And um, she said, balance. And then when, once I like, you know, digested it, you know, understood it and received it, balance is the key to living in this world to stay grounded as well as trying to become our higher selves and ascend um, to the 5D or 6D or 7D or 4D or whatever you want to say. Balance, 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 balance. Um, because when you think about it, it really does make sense. It really does make sense. But people are like, how, how can you eat meat if it's like karmic dense, you know? like. Um, some, that could be like one of the arguments that people say or vegans could say, oh, you're, you're torturing animals and all this or whatever. Well, the secret to that is um, if, when, if there is a, you know, minimal, like the uh, minority perspective, always have a, know that there is a minority uh, perspective out there. Okay, for instance, um, there are, like let's say I'm gonna give you an example my grandparents have their farm right and these animals are not tortured these animals are living their life eating you know nutritional food from earth and you know not being injected with chemicals and are living a life of fulfillment of life and they have kids and they like reproduce and they have all this 
sometimes the cows are ready to be sacrificed for for consumption, right? For, you know, to serve another purpose, right? So um, they do a ritual in a way. It's like a, it's, it's a spiritual ritual for the animal to ascend its body. And once it's fulfilled, then we can consume it with an intention of, it's all about atten intention, really. Um, but you eat the food and it's all for the better, great for everyone, right? So it's not like a factory farm of animals being like tortured, right? Yes, you have that perspective and yes, that does occur, occur. And that is majority of the food. However, they are, that's that minority perspective. You like, you have to think about that. What if the animals are not tortured? And if they are tortured, right? Let's say that we do consume meat that it has karmic energy, suffering inside. Then we have, when we eat food, we shouldn't eat food unconsciously. Have an intention, a conscious intention of consuming the meat. Transcending that suffering for the animal and using it for its best intention. There's a phrase uh, in Japanese called itadakimasu, which is like, let this be a feast. That in a way, it's like kind of like a mantra of saying, you know, this food, thank you for the people who made it. Thank you for the, the animals that were, you know, used for this meal for us and the vegetables as well, you know, because vegetables are lives and you're cutting them down. So all that is about intention right it's all about intention that's kind of like my wisdom that i'm sharing now balance is what my mother gave me knowledge is what i accumulated and experience is now intention eat food with intention and it's going to be okay you could eat meat you could eat um vegetables you could eat anything right with just intention uh so Another perspective that I like to take on with the argument of veganisms who will say, oh, well, meat is like bad for you and everything like that. Well, uh, biologically, we are meant to go through that evolutionary stage of eating meat because it's in our history of human beings. Um, however, uh, where was I going with this? Another perspective about meat. Yeah. <laughs> My trade of thought went because I'm thinking of so many things. Um, oh, so animals are 2D, right? So let's say you believe in karma. Okay, and we're just setting up the context of you believe in karma. Then these animals come in, um, are reincarnated to learn something, right? You, you 2D. So in a way, you can think about it that these animals reincarnated to learn suffering because apparently they didn't learn suffering, so they came and learned through that perspective, right? You can say that, you know, someone was so, such a bad person, right? We're saying bad because, you know, you're thinking of karma and bad and good or whatever in that perspective and context. Bad, so they reincarnated into a cow and they're being slaughtered so they can learn, right? That's a perspective. And we're here to transmute, not transcend, transmute that energy. Right, so there are many perspectives on eating meat. So, either extreme, I think, is okay. Right, you can be a carnivore or, veg or vegan; it doesn't really matter. It's intention and balance is what having a balance and having an intention with the balance is the key. So let's say balance. Okay, so let's say um, in the morning you want to eat very healthy. Right, so you can eat a vegan meal all vegetarian, raw, cooked, semi-cooked, some quinoa with some soybean, tofu, whatever, right? Um, you could eat, you know, you could eat that. And then in the afternoon, you want to eat a burger or you want to eat some pizza with cheese on it, right? Whatever. It's called balance. That That's what it is. That's all it consists of balance. So when you eat, veg, like let's say a vegan meal, um, have the intention of, you know, you know, using that energy for that's like for your best potential. If you eat uh, pizza, cheese comes from uh, you know animals. Okay, transmute that. Be like you know I'm using this energy so I can learn from you know the animals or whatever. You know, use it as um, an intention of like fulfilling your highest good because pretty much that is 
everyone wants to fulfill their highest purpose and we're here to help you remind you of that and that is the beauty of it that's the secret and that's my experience knowledge and wisdom and hopefully um, you kind of understand it hopefully I, I understood it made it clear made it in the form of way that it's easier for you to kind of like think about it or you know ponder on the idea and not really stress about food because being a vegan um, you do miss out on a lot of things let me just tell you that um, if I was a vegan and I came to Japan I wouldn't be able to enjoy the culture of Japan because I'm restricted to a certain diet you know I find I find that that extreme is not beneficial because you I'm learning from uh, Japanese individuals the society as a whole the food that is enriched with you know secrets and and culture and everything that is so magnificent of the Japanese culture is in the food and food has a lot of culture and a lot of um, experience and a lot of uh, suffering and pain and you learn through that so if I was a vegan I wouldn't be able to come to Japan and enjoy like food that is so delicious and um, full of energy and life really and suffering don't forget that <laughs> um, however that's one of the downsides of being vegan right but there's also downsides of being carnivore there's ups and downs that's what I'm saying balance baby balance and I just want to remind myself to stay balanced and always have an intention when I eat food. And I want to share that with you and hopefully you leave a comment or a message on your perspective on food, uh, being a carnivore or an omnivore. Make a video response to this. Uh, let's have a conversation. I think, I'm not saying that my perspective is the right perspective. I just think it's the most beneficial perspective for both extremes, bipolarity, right? The dualistic uh, form of like this world that we live in. Oh, be a vegan. Oh, be a carnivore. No, balance. Be both. Know both. Be both because we're all, we're everything, right? So, um, yeah, I was like, I want to make this video and I'm like, you know, I want to talk about food and, you know, if someone asks me what are my thoughts on food, this is this is how I feel and this is what I think about food. So uh, share the video if you uh, agree on the perspective, like the video if you want more of this or like the video if you really um, are pondering on your food consumption and everything like that. So yay! <laughs> Um, but definitely leave me a comment on your uh, ideas, your feelings on this video, your feelings on food, and etc. And see if we could have a dialogue of this. So, uh, until later, I will, I will feel you later. Bye, loves. Bye.